Today in the United States, nearly two-thirds of the population is overweight. Almost one in three Americans is obese. And no one wants to be. Americans want to be thinner. And yet old and young Americans are getting fatter and fatter and fatter. We all think it's our own fault. It is not that simple. The food industry is also at fault. We're besieged. Wherever we go, we're encouraged to eat junk food. And the government is at fault. We have government policies that promote overeating from the beginning to the end of the food chain. Tonight, we will tell you how the government and the food industry have helped to make America fat. Today, American farmers produce for domestic consumption vastly more food than America needs, nearly twice as much. And the more food we grow, the more we eat. Abundance has become the enemy. If you want to understand why people eat the way they do, you need to understand the way agriculture works in this country. And not many people in the government have made the connection between subsidies to agriculture and obesity. But there is one, and it's very important. The Bush administration's man in charge of public health is Health and Human Services Secretary Tommy Thompson. Do you see any connection between the federal government's agricultural subsidy programs and nutrition? There's no question that if you uh, have money out there and subsidize in particular things, it's, that product is going to be grown more. And some of those products are not good for nutrition. If that's what you're asking me, yes. We wanted to see what the food pyramid would look like if it reflected where the government farm subsidies actually end up. Look at this. Since 1995, meat and dairy got about three times the subsidies of grains. According to data from the Department of Agriculture and the Environmental Working Group, sugars, fats, the foods government says we should eat least, got about 20 times more subsidies than fruits and vegetables. There's a disconnect between agriculture policy and health policy. That's probably the biggest problem. Subsidized corn is everywhere. The whole food system has been, as someone said, cornified. Corn is processed and put into thousands of products that Americans use every day. Americans consume nearly three times more corn in the form of corn sweeteners than they do in every other form. Corn is the principal source of sweeteners in American diets. So what these subsidies do is to lower the cost of the ingredients that go in processed foods, particularly high-calorie processed foods, and they make those foods cheaper. As for fruits and vegetables, if Americans were to follow a healthy diet, the Department of Agriculture says that nearly twice the number of acres of fruits and vegetables would have to be planted. We're talking about huge agribusiness companies uh, that own thousands, hundreds of thousands of acres. And these are, of course, the people who give the largest campaign contributions to members of Congress. Government subsidizes more food, which you would say, as the country's leading health officer, is bad for us, and subsidizes less those foods, which you would tell us, are good for us and we should eat. And that has also been throughout the ages. And uh, Congress has made those decisions, and they're political ones, as you know, Peter. And I don't think you're going to change the political arena as far as subsidizing agriculture in America in the near future. The cheapness of the food ingredients encourages the food industry to produce processed foods that sit on supermarket shelves, have very cheap ingredients, and can be sold at high prices because they're branded. Processed foods are typically made from a mixture of sugar, water, flour, starch, fat, artificial colorings and flavorings. And you could make almost anything out of that. Puddings, snack foods, beverages. Those are dirt cheap to produce. The food is nothing. It's the processing. That's where the profits are. A typical supermarket may have 30, 40, 50,000 products, most of it processed food made with government subsidized ingredients. Food industries pushed on mass distribution of low cost products. That's their strategy. 
With obesity on our minds, we went to the Food Marketing Institute's annual convention in Chicago. This is where the packaged food industry unveils its new products. We couldn't quite believe what we were seeing here. Thousands of new products. What I like to say is Yoohoo is like an everyday sort of thing, three or four times a day, whereas your Yoohoo double fudge is more like a dessert. Free samples, we're giving them away today. If you look at the new foods that are being marketed each year, probably 90% of them are packaged foods, very often junk foods. The tip of that food pyramid, what you should eat less of. And the more of these top of the pyramid, low nutrition, high calorie foods they introduce, the more of them we eat. In the 60s and 70s, we consumed healthy snacks. Kids consume milk, we consume fruit, we consume what you would think of as really good foods. What's changed in the last decade is we're consuming high fat salty snacks. That could be tortilla chips or potato chips. It could be kind of candies and desserts and so forth. We've really changed the nature of what we call a snack. Of course what you eat is a personal decision. The overweight and obesity epidemics are a result of people choosing to eat more, eat larger portions, and eat more often. Don't you think the food industry is simply giving people the products they want. I don't think that you can talk about giving the public what the public wants without discussing the 33 billion dollars a year that the food industry spends to try to promote that kind of want. Do you need anything else here? If you were going to design a strategy to try to get people to eat more food, you'd make food more convenient, you'd make it ubiquitous, you'd encourage people to eat more frequently on more different eating occasions, and you'd encourage them to eat larger portions. And all of those are deliberate strategies to sell more food. Obesity is not going to be solved th through sheer physical activity. The food industry would like to blame everything on lack of exercise. Eat as much as you want, exercise it off. You have to jog for 15 minutes to burn just one ounce of potato chips. You have to bike for an hour to burn the calories of this soda. And this supersized meal at McDonald's has so many calories, you have to walk for six hours to burn it off. The problem is, is that most of the foods that are marketed to children are unhealthy foods. And the children are exposed to so many messages about junk food that the cultural norm around food has changed so that children think that they should be getting candy and cookies and chips and soda and these other junky foods all the time. The average American child sees 10,000 food advertisements a year on television alone. Most of those advertisements are for fast food, sugar-coated cereals, soft drinks and candy, and other foods dense in fat and calories. These are your members. Are you happy to hear those statistics? Well, I think that companies are, are trying to market their products responsibly. When you're putting together an advertising campaign, do you care whether the product is healthy or not? I care that the product has a positive role in a child's life. But you know what's less healthy. You know where asparagus and soda pop line up. You are absolutely correct that I am not going to get the same return on investment for a client in advertising asparagus and spinach to a kid as advertising some of the so-called less healthy products to kids. Guilty as charged. All the marketing to children is feeding an epidemic of childhood obesity. 15% of all children between 6 and 19 are overweight or obese. And that is nearly 9 million children. Many children already show signs of the serious diseases that result from being overweight. Our children eat so badly nowadays that a quarter of elementary school age children already have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or some other risk factor for heart disease. These are little kids, and they already are on their way to a heart attack very young children are now showing signs of type 2 diabetes, a terrible disease that was never seen in such young children before. The diet of many American children may already be condemning them to a lifetime of illness. 25 years. And since then, according to the Surgeon General, obesity among children and adults has become the most pressing public health issue in the nation. Clearly, when you look at the consequences of the public health crisis we have today, government has got to step in. It's no different than tobacco was 20 or 30 years ago. We told people don't smoke. 
But until we really started to get serious about it and make changes, look at the escalation of health care costs associated with tobacco smoking. As we made this program, we often thought about how long it took before government recognized that smoking was a public health issue. And now it's obesity. Just think of the money it is costing the country. So how long will it take government to act? I'm Peter Jennings. Thank you and good night.